musicians in bars getting beer. It's Barney Bentall. How are you doing, sir? Good. How are you doing? I'm great, thanks. Uh, let's get right to uh, top of the top of the news stories. What's up this weekend? We are doing the 15th uh, uh, version of the Gordon Light Gordon Lightfoot tribute night. That's uh, uh, a whole bunch of different artists come and, and play Gordon Lightfoot songs, and uh, more often than not, he shows up, which is wonderful. And I, he's was was and continues to be such an influence for 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 me over the course of my career and my life in music. So it's a thrill. I, I love doing it. And and all, you're around all these peers, these wonderful musicians, and everybody's just honoring this catalog of, of, of Gordon. So, and Hughes Room is a wonderful place to do it. Uh, all four nights are sold out. It'd be great. Awesome. And uh, you have an anniversary of your own. That's that's 15th anniversary of that show. Yeah. 15th and final. But you have an anniversary of your own with the uh, with your band. With, with the Legendary Hearts. Yeah, it's 30 years since we released our first record on Sony or uh, Epic back in those days. And uh, we're going to do some shows in Ontario. We're doing shows out west and some in Ontario to celebrate that, to mark that anniversary. And it's it's wonderful. That, 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 you know, it's been a it's been a great long journey with those guys and and uh, we always love it when we play together I mean I do a lot I'm touring all the time in various iterations of my own band do solo stuff but but when we get back on it's the proverbial getting on a bicycle I mean it's just as if we never stop playing that's great yeah um, you want to talk about any highlights of the past 30 years with that bunch of guys oh god you know what uh, it was I think when I look back, you know, I remember the first time we played uh, the, 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 the Commodore Ballroom in Vancouver. I'd watched, I'd seen U2's first North American performance there. I'd watched, seen The Clash there, I'd, you know, and it was, it was this venerable lady ballroom that, uh, that you know, was, was so, so iconic in, in Canadian musical history. And all of a sudden, when, you know, we were headlining there and we sold it out. And we'd, we'd sort of, we'd gone through, we just struggled in obscurity for what seemed like a long time back then, relatively speaking, it was sort of five years of working and learning our craft. And all of a sudden you, you, you sort of got over that hump and, uh, and, and it, you know, sort of stuck together in the trenches. That was great. And then the rest is just so many wonderful road memories and, and uh, you know, I love when we do play the stories, you know, it'll be great when we come out to Ontario because we were used to be out here all the time and, uh, and yeah, it's really, they are a band of brothers in my mind. So that first show at the Commodore Ballroom is a big one in your mind. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you've been all over the world. I like to travel for sure, yeah, yeah. So any, any memorable uh, spots in the world that you... Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's funny. I we do uh, some of some of the Canadian musicians. We host these trips that go to various locales uh, in support of music counts and uh, and uh, Canadian Olympians. And we uh, so I'm going to Vietnam this year with Jim Cuddy and Tom Cochran, and we'll we'll be doing lots of uh, informal playing for the people that are on these trips. And those those kind of nights. I mean, we've done that. We were. We were in uh, Mallorca together last year in, in Tuscany, and to play with those those people, and in that kind of informal way, oh, that's the, those those are wonderful experiences. So that continues to be a great thing. Recently, did a song with Jim. Yeah, yeah, and, and, uh, that song on my new record called "Won't Change the World," and I so check that out. It's got a great video, and and Jim uh, uh, Jim has been a long time friend, you know, for. But as long as the, you know, that's it's having its thirtieth anniversary pretty much too, and uh, uh, he's just I think such a uh, pivotal part of the Canadian music industry, and you know, just wonderful singer, writer, and, and wonderful friend. Uh, so that's on your previous album. Uh, yeah, it's on the Drifter and the Preacher. Won't change the world. Uh, the the duo with Jim. Great. And uh, you want to tell us more about that album? Uh, well, I got, I'm super proud of this record. Uh, I uh, recorded it in the uh, 
the old Mushroom Studios where we, you know, we're, we're talking about this 30th anniversary, where we recorded something to live for and where we made our first record. So to go back in there was very meaningful and the room sounds so great. I mean, we that's a room where, you know, Working for the Weekend by Loverboy was recorded or Barracuda by Heart, you know, I, all that. Those walls just had so much, have so much wonderful music still reverberating through them. That sounds and, cool. Uh, uh, yeah, it's it was it was a great record to make, and and uh, I love that, you know, the the, the drifter, the preacher, the minor. There's, and a lot of the record rocks. Just the good. It's the way I like music. You know, it's just, it's just more introspective stuff, and then there's rocks. I love the variety. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, does it inspire you when you're in a studio like that to do something that you haven't done, or, or just to just to nail it? Oh God, <laughs> you do whatever you, you can to get the job done. I think when you're recording, it's funny that this song, The Drifter, I, uh, I uh, thought I had such high hopes for it. And then we started to record it, and it just wasn't working. And I thought. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's a dud, and you, uh, and then somebody, then you just try things and go, okay, I'll stop playing guitar. Somebody tried said, let's try this, and it, you know, and I really had one of those moments where, uh, you know, I, I looked at everybody and I said, so this is that point in time where everybody's looking at me. So what do we do? And I go, I don't have a fucking clue. So let's, <laughs> what do we, you know, and then at that point everybody tries to work towards it, and then then I end up getting. One of the fav my, my favorite things I've recorded in the last decade. So, I don't know, you do whatever to get the job done. Absolutely. Um, do you want to play anything? I could. Yeah, sure. If you feel like it, I'm, well. I'm into it. Yeah. Do we made a, a record, a, a video for Don't Wait For Me Marie and, and check it out. It's filmed at the ranch and it's, it's pretty much... Um, pretty much an eight minute western and uh, and my son Dustin and I are having a chase on horseback at the end it's, oh, nice. it's great it's, uh, except one of the horses went lame so we had to end up using the same horse to do the chase and just filming <laughs> the horse had to do double duty that day but um, not quite Steve McQueen yeah but it was it's it's great it's, that's awesome you should check that out and, well, then. I can attach things in the playlist too. So. That would be great. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, speaking of Dustin, I'll do. Uh, uh, he's making. He's uh, he's got a musical career and also making handmade leather boots in Toronto here, which is great. Um, and um, this is a song he and I wrote together called "The Miner." Does he have a store? Uh, well, he's with the guys with Coup de Tat who make hats. And uh, they've got a they've got a shop where it's kind of a slightly retail thing. There okay. Too. Okay.
a very hard question to hmm. to answer where does where do they come from they just you know you 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 start somewhere and you you follow your nose and uh, heard somebody talk about there's this this poet this this woman in her 90s she was saying I might be working out in the garden and then I feel it coming across the you know fields it's like this this wind and all I've got to, I've got to get inside and get to a piece of paper so I can catch it and write it down and that, I thought that was a beautiful view of creativity because sometimes people focus it on themselves it's something I'm doing I did this I wrote this when in some ways I where or, you know I think there's an argument to be made that great art or music or songs is 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 something you're kind of a, a conduit or a vessel for it, you know. So I think the truly the good ones, you know, you, you just go, I'm just kind of trying to, 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 there's something out there and I'm just trying to, trying to put it in some form so you can play yeah. it. I don't know, you just, it's you write, you get an idea and you write songs, you know. It's a good answer. <laughs> okay, I'm glad it's not much of a definitive <laughs> one. <laughs> it's okay. It's some line. Um, what about uh, some of your life-changing songs? Um, you know, something to live for was uh, was something that must have changed your life in a big way. Well, it did because I was about to quit. Not not because not because I I'm, I'm just not I'm not a quitter. I'm uh, I can I've got a lot of stamina, but uh, I I you know we had a young family and it was just we were struggling so much. And so I think it was a time where I thought I've got to get some decent paying job so we can make this work. And there was really a, a point where you went, yeah, but just give it one more try. And we were really, uh, we were hungry and desperate. And, and we, we wrote that song and recorded it, made it, made it kind of an independent video. And lo and behold, we were out west in Vancouver, but it got played in sort of heavy rotation of much music and then I could come out and see all the record companies and and you know it, it, it fairly quick order we had a record deal so and then yeah that was everything changed because really without that song I I think I probably would have been maybe I would have been a weekend warrior been in some sort of weekend band I didn't know though if you do music full-time I you know, I've often asked myself the question, if for whatever reason I quit, 
would I would I play all the time? I don't know if I would. It's 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 an interesting question. I don't know that I would play for hobby sake. I think uh, so. You you know really you only have one option. You keep your chops up and you play live often enough that you don't have to. It's not like remounting an army when you go to do it again. I just keep keep yourself in the game. I picture you playing guitar by a fire at your place. Well, I do like that. I, I do like that. If I'm writing, yeah, I, I, I do a lot of that. Like I'll, that's a great, that's a great spot for me to write. You know, pour a glass of wine, days done. You know, there's lots of things to do on the ranch. I, people probably, sometimes people say to me, do you just go up there and write? I go, I go up with the intention to do that, but then I end up, I end up, fixing things you know or there's always something to do but you come in, in the evening like you say you know, sit down with a glass of wine and and you start working on working on a song well dinner's cooking and then you might get up the next morning while you're having coffee and you know you've let that whole thing percolate and you uh, 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 the idea is sort of rumbling around in your head and, and then uh, and then you see where it's you know where, where sleep or dream state might have influenced it a little bit, sure. you know? I, th I think that, that happens. I used, to, I used to be paranoid about not wanting to forget an idea, and I read a Paul McCartney quote where he goes, they go, how did you remember all this stuff when you're writing? They were writing so much material, and he goes, I don't really worry about that. If, if it was good, you'd remember it. And, and it, was, it was a very influential quote to me, hmm. because I went, you know what? If, if you're working on something, and you got a bit of a verse and chorus idea, and you leave it, you go out for a walk, or you go do something, and then you come back, and, and, and lo and behold, you can't remember part of it, but you can remember one, one part of it is really easy to get. And you go, okay, let's, let's build on that, let's see where else this will go. That's the part that's important. Yeah. Your mind is already prioritized. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, that's very cool. That's great. So, Paul McCartney, obviously a big influence as well. Oh, totally. You want to talk about some others? You said Gordon Lightfoot, of course. Yeah, Gordon Lightfoot was like, a, like a, he, you know, the uh, the finger picking. I I had to laboriously listen to uh, his records, and you know, in in yes, mm -hmm. and at the door with my head bowed in my hand, all that stuff. I, you know, that was such a huge part of my musical education. I mean, not, not from lessons per se, just like what we did when I mean, we used to sit around speakers and try and figure out what was going on in that Beatles song, yeah. which was, you know, that was a pretty tall order to try and sort that out, but, but that's what you did and that's how you learned. In the old days before the internet came along. And yeah, and you know, I mean, sometimes ta oh, there's the tabs, you know, I mean, it's probably gotten, it's gotten way better. I don't, yeah. I don't, I still use my ear. If I'm trying to learn something, I mean, I, I, there was one of the Gordon Lightfoot songs I'm doing this weekend. I, I actually did, I kind of looked, I, I looked at a tab or I looked at somebody playing and went, because there's some I couldn't quite figure it out. So I did, I did use that resource and they're all there. But, but I mean, you know, we used to just trial and freaking error. So, slow the turntable down. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Want to give us a snippet of that song, the Gordon what, song? Oh, okay. What, well, yeah, there's, this uh, it's called Shadows, and uh, I couldn't figure out I couldn't figure out this uh, this chord. I just couldn't get it, and then, and then I went and looked at something. I got there it was, and it was pretty simple. I was, like, Won't you reach out of love and touch me? And let me hold you for a while. I've been all around this world, oh how long? There's a shadow on the moon and the waters here below do not shine the way they should. And I love you just in case you didn't know. Let it go. And let it happen like it happened once before. It's a wicked wind and it chills me. And if you do not believe it, come and gaze upon the shadow at your door. So that 
that that uh, that's a taste of that one. But uh, it is a beautiful song. Other than music, what keeps you grounded? Farm, things like that. Oh, family. farm, family, yeah, animals, nature. I'm I I, I ride my bicycle a lot. I love riding bicycles and uh, being out. Side is huge to me. I if I I love being in Toronto and the energy of the city. Mm -hmm. I love coming here, but you know I, I I think I like living rurally and just being in touch with nature. That really grounds me, definitely. Yeah. How do you want to close out? Do you want to talk about a website or anything like? Usually I do a little bit of that kind of. Well, there's always stuff on my website and and, and Facebook fan page and try and contribute to that myself uh, when I can and uh, and you know check out that video for Don't Wait For Me, me Marie we're pretty darn proud of that I, I and it's uh, yeah that was that was super fun to do and you know i just I, I mean as long as I, I can keep going I'll keep going future plans any anything coming up well just the the legendary hearts dates that's going to be great end right. of May Okay. And uh, and then festivals in the summer, so. So we'll see you around. You betcha. Great talking to you. Nice talking to you too. So yeah. it's been an honor. Musicians in bars getting beer, having a coffee at Sirius yeah. XM. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Marcia. Sure was a beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.